I am sitting with Miami legendary sports reporter, Jeff Fox. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Happy to be here. Yes, right. I really want to get into this first and foremost because, you know, sports and entertainment all intertwined and just totally with the fact you see the neighborhood DJ. As a kid, yeah, yeah. Um, back then, and I'm going to age myself by saying this, but, uh, you know, I don't consider myself old, just experienced. You know what I mean? But when I was coming up, we played records, you know, so. Hip hop, yeah, hip hop is turning 50, and I'm about as old as hip hop. <laughs> so, you know, so all my life, I loved hip hop, I loved R&B, and all the uh, neighborhood parties. I had all the records, so I was invited to every party. You know, I was a pretty popular kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, even at school, like, if you were having a party at school, you got to invite Jeff. You know, so I had, I had two nicknames. One, one was Fresh Jeff, and the other was Sports Illustrated. That was my nickname. I was going to ask, so, I mean, given that you were here, we had the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, because of my dad. Okay. Yeah, my dad's uh, from the Bahamas, and where I'm from as well. And he used to be a bodybuilder. So he was in the Mr. Universe contest with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all of them, yeah. So he did a must love dudes, which I, means I have no excuse. <laughs> so I know that you're about to launch, you know, like I said, sports has been a lifelong thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we are. Remix Sports Media is a company started by our CEO, Tommy Green. And um, happily, I came along and he selected me as host, you know, because I had a similar idea. So it was kind of like we just merged our ideas into coming one company, which is the Miami Man Cave Show. Which, yeah, the Mommy Man Cave, man, and everybody seems to love it. Um, everybody seems to get the idea because every house, most guys, we have a man cave, and what do we do? Talk sports, talk shit. Talk sports, talk shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of that. Guy stuff. Yeah, when do you guys plan on launching? Well, we, we actually launched already. Uh, we had a big party, um, kind of intimate, though. A launch party, and uh, we have two episodes streaming right now. So it's streaming on all platforms. And I saw that you guys were talking to like Chip Day and all these other sorts of people, and they're like from artists to sports people, whatever they may be. But I think I like the thing I like the most is that the Man Cave kind of doesn't it doesn't sing you single out just sports conversations, right? You can have people like Trick Daddy or maybe a chef or yeah. a doctor come and have these same conversations. Yep, absolutely, 100%. Politics, um, I mean a politician, I'd rather not get into the politics part, but uh, we're, we're open to everybody, man. Like, um, black entrepreneurship, like, you know, we support that. We support everything, you know, whether it's sports or whether it's a local person that's doing big things in the community, you know, we're all about empowering that, you know, even women are welcome. So don't, I know it's called the Miami Man Cave, but we love the ladies too, right. definitely. Happy Women's History Month. Like yes, 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 no doubt, no doubt. Uh, so prior to the Miami Man Cave, what was your general focus? Um, I, I came from a radio background, used to work at 790 The Ticket locally and WQAM. Uh, we had a show called The Sports Brothers, so I was a co-host of The uh, Sports Brothers, and we worked with a lot of ESPN guys, Stephen A. Smith, Dan Labatard, because ESPN owned the radio station at one point, you know, and um, just a love for local Miami sports, man, all the local teams. I'm a Raider, trapped in the 305. I'm a Vegas Raider. Yes, I am. Proud Raiders. Go Raiders. And I love my Canes and Miami Heat. Canes, uh, Dolphins, um, some of everybody, man. Marlins, you know, we make it do what it do. I love the South Florida sports fan. I think Miami is a unique place. It's a melting pot. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. There, there aren't too many places like that, but I definitely know Miami and New York will be the biggest melting 
One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I lo I love the different cultures. Um, I love the uh, Haitian food, Jamaican food, Bahamian. You know, obviously you can tell I haven't missed many meals, but uh, I, I'm getting in shape though because I, I'm a radio guy and I got a face for radio. So, you know, but now I'm looking fly, I must admit, you know, and the man cave has changed some of that. So I'm getting used to it. I was going to say, um, like, explain your background in journalism, like where it started. Um, it started actually in the Bahamas, the local radio called Radio Bahamas ZNS3 or ZNS. I started there, and then when I moved here, I got a crazy story, man. Like, I got a record deal, you know? I got a, yeah, I used, I used to be a rapper. Um, and yeah, I signed, there's a Miami pop group called Expose. They came out, uh, they had like mad hits, number one hits. They were signed to Arista Records. So the company that had them signed me. And, um, one of the other record labels that was bidding for me was Sutra Records out of New York, which had the Fat Boys. That's how old school I am. You know, so I used to rap like, my name is Jeff, and I am deaf. And I'll, you know, when hip hop was in the infancy. So, but I did get a record deal back in the day, and uh, that's when I moved to South Florida and pursued the hip hop career. I had a launch party at Luke's on Miami Beach. A lot of people don't know that. In fact, Luke, you don't even know that. I don't know if you remember, but we had a party at your club. Um, for real, my record release party. And it was wild, man. I was on a show called One House Street in Philadelphia with uh, LL Cool J. Uh, it was downtown Philadelphia. And shit, I'm trying to remember who else was there. Uh, Muhammad Ali's daughter was there. Or whatever, and so it was you know thought I was gonna be some big hip hop superstar, but it, but that didn't pan out, you know. So all right, so you started with radio and, mm -hmm. and then you got signed, you started building your network as an artist here. So at what point did you just hang that head up and you were like, all right, I'm going with that? Or did you actually even stop? No, I never really stopped. Um, I got into DJing over here once I got in Miami. I relocated here. I was lucky, I was fortunate. Um, I built my name doing underground radio stations in Florida City and Homestead. So that was like my second home, Florida City. It felt like the Bahamas, so I got really comfortable there. Homestead, you know, laid back, and then I built, I got pretty popular in the neighborhoods uh, doing parties locally of a lot of the DJs here. And I kind of Embrace the whole culture of being from Miami. You know, I'm still Bahamian to the core, but um, very much uh, 305 in the blood. You know what I mean? So this is like off trail a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. But last night I tried conk. Is that what you're calling? Yeah. I tried it. That's like oh yeah, it's an aphrodisiac. It, it's good for some things. <laughs> Yeah, you got to have conch salad or conch fritters, you know, that type of stuff is pretty good, man. For real. Yeah, I love I love that. All right, so, like I said, you, you hung up the hat as an artist. You never really stopped the radio. You always were plugged in. More so as a promoter, I guess we'll say, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard because um, I was actually doing a security guard job at the time because, you know, I would take whatever type of... Yeah, just to make money. So I did, no doubt, no doubt. And as a security guard, I would listen to the radio, and I would hear um, talk shows. And I didn't like what was happening, what was being said on the show. Like when black callers called the radio station, and they wanted to talk local high school, or they wanted to talk the Michael Vick thing was going on at the time, and they were killing him. And I come from a culture where I understood the dog fighting, I understood all of that. I could, you know, I'm not saying it's right, but I understood where it came from and what some of the callers were saying. But most of the radio stations and the local media and national media were just killing this guy. Who went to jail and he, you know, you guys know the whole Michael Vick story, but it was only from one perspective. And I listened to a couple of brothers out of Atlanta, Georgia. Shout out to the Two Live Stews. They are my inspiration. Doug and Ryan Stewart, 
and uh, Stephen A. Smith, um, who I got involved with pretty early in my career. And uh, they inspired me to, to pursue the dream. I mean, I, one thing I'm taking from you is that um, upcoming creatives, um, mm -hmm. word creatives like, so upcoming creatives shouldn't be afraid to use their other skills. No, not at all. You literally said like five different things that you used to do, but they all somehow connect. Them. They connect. So one thing I'm realizing is that for sure is something that I needed to hear myself. Because, but... Um, Pursue your dream. That's what it's all about because I knew early on, I interviewed Jason Jackson, who's the radio voice of the Miami Heat in our first episode. Jackson and I have something in common, which is that we both knew very early on in life that somehow we wanted to be on radio. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I would fall asleep with a little small transistor radio next to my ear. My mom would come and like, is this radio? Take it off of my head. Like I was just into it, and I would imitate the guys on TV. Bob Costas was the one time I got nervous doing an interview. I never get nervous. I never. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I can't explain it. It's like I went to Syracuse and I didn't. You know, I just know how to do it. A gift from God, I guess. But that was the one time I got nervous was. I had to interview Bob Costas, and I kind of stuttered a little bit, which never happens, you know, but I guess it happens once, you know. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, being that I'm an upcoming journalist, I know a few of my friends will probably watch this. They watch my interviews, you know, so. Right. I said, what are some tips that you would give us to make our job a little bit easier? Have <laughs> Number one is have fun. This is fun. You know, and I get on my CEO, Tommy Green, a little bit because he's a businessman. And he sometimes brings that, you know, uh, that business type of attitude to stuff what we're doing, shoots and whatever. I want this to be fun. The day it stops being fun is the day I stop doing it. You know, it's kind of like it was with DJ. And when I stop enjoying it, then I'm out. You know, but number one is have fun. Number one is never take no for an answer. You know, when people tell you, never let somebody tell you what you cannot do. Because that decision is only up to you and God. And, you know, you pursue, pursue your dreams there for sure. Uh, and the third thing would be, I don't know, uh, you know, be original, I guess. You know, be yourself. Nobody can be you but you. And nobody can be a better version of you than you. So if that makes sense, the, those would be the three things I would tell anybody that's coming up. Right. And piggybacking off of that, you do have a bunch of experience. So, you know, we're coming up in a very technological time. Yeah. Everything is very sped up. Um, I know the average consumer's attention span is less than eight seconds now. Oh, yeah. So, like, all of our content is like short form, fast, to the point. I'm learning that. Yeah, I was going to say, how has the transition been in between that world and this one and then merging them together? That's a very good question. Very good question. Um, it's an adjustment because, again, I did a two-hour radio show, sometimes four hours, um, because you had people listening to you talk for four hours. You got to be a hell of a... Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you had truck drivers, you had people on shifts, like a security guard or in an office somewhere listening. I mean, it was an easy transition. As you can tell, I talk a lot. I'm just a natural at it. But to get used to the digital world now with the short content and the short form, I'm learning that. There's still a lot of stuff I don't know how to do. So I'm definitely... Yeah, it's a learning process. It's an adjustment. Think that we don't know how to do that. You came up yeah. So, for sure. Yeah, and I, I don't, I haven't conquered the whole TikTok and okay. and all of those things. You know, granted, TikTok it might be on the on its deathbed if we haven't yeah. heard the news. Yeah, but you know, the whole digital content and fast paced and hard hitting people don't listen to you. Anything past two minutes, or if you do a podcast, you can't keep it too long. You cannot have a two-hour podcast. Like, that's... <laughs>
Be solo. Yeah, people like to skip to one part and then this part. Yeah, I kind of like this new technology, to be honest with you. I dig it. My son, who's in the U.S. Marines now, um, probably happy he's away from me. But every other second when he was here, Junior! Hey, Junior, come here. Man, how, how do you do this? Yeah, do this thing. I feel like Fred Flintstone sometimes. I don't know if you know who that is. As the art, they were friends from the Stone Ages, and that's how I feel sometimes when it comes to all this new technology. But I love it; it's easier, yeah, a lot easier. Right. I mean, and then going into Miami Man Cave show, that's a podcast one. Yep. I mean, like you said, can't be too long because watch time is too low. But everyone loves podcasts. Everybody. So is this your first time going into podcasts? No, it's, I did some of my own. Um, you know, I had the Jeff Fox show online after I left radio. Um, radio business is cruel. And you can be in and out just like that. So podcast is repa- replacing broadcast. You know, now now you could it gives you more freedom to say what you want. You're not so restricted when you're on the on the air. You know, I'm, I got called into the uh, boss's office. Numerous occasions for you can't say that on the radio. I'm like, oh, okay, sorry, you know. But podcast gives you unlimited freedom, um, and we plan on, yeah, you get to be yourself. You know, Draymond Green, who uh, played for the uh, NBA champs, Golden State Warriors, um, is telling people now, there's we're the new me- new media. And I'm old media, but I'm embracing the new media as well. Exactly. You're still new media. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the game is changing, man. It ain't about the whole dudes in the stuffy suits and, you know, or like, it, it's a new day in, in broadcasting. It's a new day. And all of that said, um, how often do you guys plan to drop my Miami Kid episodes? Um, that would probably be something to. Tommy would um, would be able to answer, but uh, we uh, we got a few episode, episodes in the can already. Yeah. So do me a favor and plug in your social media as well as my Indian show. All right, you can follow me on Instagram at Jeff Fox the host, and on Twitter at the Sports Bros. Um, the Jeff Fox, the host. Oh, but let me tell you about something else before I do that. This whole branding thing that we're doing um, is new to me as well. Like, when I went to Remix Sports Meet, oh, Jeff, you can't have everything on your Instagram. So we deleted my entire Instagram, which I was like, no, that's years of stuff. I got important pictures there. Well, Jeff, you can archive it. I didn't know. I mean, you know, I thought they were deleting all of that, you know. So I'm still learning stuff. That's a part of the process, you know. They look at me like a dinosaur sometimes, but it's fun. It's fun. I can laugh at myself. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, absolutely. But yeah, I'm on um, IG at Jeff Fox, the host. I have like four other. Instagram pages. I can't even remember all of them, but that's the important one. Uh, the Instagram at Jeff Fox, the host, and at Remix Sports Media, and the Miami Man Cave as well. Yeah. Oh man, I could talk for hours, man. That's what I do. That's what I do. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hip hop since 1987. I like that. I like that. Yeah, you, let me drop a freestyle for you real quick. Uh, so it goes like, just to, to see if I still got a little bit of skills. Because um, Jeff Fox, the Bahamian rapper, on the mic, I'll make your hands clap to fat rhymes on top of wicked tracks. And these are the facts. Man, your shit is whack. So bring all the boys in the hood. It'll do no good. I'm handing out beat downs, understood? So ring the alarm, sound boy, I go dead. Fuck with me and get left to your head. I hit you out the park like Cecil Fielder. And boy, you better run when you see me. Wielder, Mike like a knife. I'll even take your wife because I'm the baddest MC you ever seen in your life. That's old school. That's old school.